Hi everyone, I am Millie Bobby Brown and I'm really happy to be here for UNICEF's World Children's Day. This is one of my favourite days of the year because this is the day we celebrate children and young people all over the world. Today I'll be speaking with three amazing activists, Emmanuel from Tanzania, Ebenu from Kazakhstan and Gitanjali from the US. This will be a discussion about the things we as young people believe in and what, the ch and what change we want to see in the world and what we hope for. Um, so I know we may not be able to meet in person, but I'm really pleased to be able to connect with you virtually. This is how everyone's been doing it due to quarantine and staying safe. But thank goodness for technology so we can all connect and discuss what's important to us on this special day. Okay, so let's start with Gitanjali. Last year for World Children's Day, I spoke about the dangers of bullying and cyberbullying and my own personal experiences with it. I hear you care about this issue and would love to hear more on your thoughts and tell everyone watching why this is so important to you. Yeah, um, first of all, it's so great to meet you. Um, so basically, I've changed schools seven times and bullying is always a thing that's on the back of my mind. It's something that I, it, it's a fear, especially with the introduction of technology. It makes it 10 times worse when you don't know who's bullying you and it makes it easier when you're doing it off your phone or your laptop. Um, but I've seen personally many of my friends bullied and just speaking up slowly started to become not enough. Um, from what I understand, there are no major reasons why a person or an individual bullies others other than the fact that they want to show superiority or attract attention in some sort of way. I soon realized that there needs to be an important for kindness, positivity, and optimism, not only in schools, but like in our daily lives, just a better internet and a better future for I guess students to live in. So basically, I've partnered with the Children's Kindness Network to create a technological service called Kindly, um, and it's able to detect and prevent cyberbullying at an early stage. Sometimes, like, bullying is an impulsive reaction without the ability to stop yourself. So the goal of Kindly forces you to think and identifies your mood, which helps to prevent bullying at an early stage. But currently I'm working on getting Kindly out there, having people use it all over the world. And yeah, I'm really excited to see a better, brighter internet for everyone. I've dealt with both, you know, I, like you said, you've changed seven schools. I only had to change schools once and it's because of a specific bully that targeted me and, you know, like you said, it's some, some way of uh, superiority or, or attracting attention. And that's, that's what was, I was understanding at a too young of an age, you know, it was like, I would, I, nobody should be having to deal with this, no young person. And it really does interfere with your education. Um, you know, it wasn't helping me focus. I was so worried all the time. So having changed schools, it made me feel a lot more calmer and at bay and school was my safe place. Um, and that's what, you know, everyone should feel. So COVID-19 has affected everyone around the world. But despite all that, you've all continued to help other people during this time. Emmanuel, I hear that you have been helping other children with their education. Tell me why this is so important to you. Well, after the closure of schools due to the eruption of COVID-19, I felt like is the need of taking another step to ensure that children are catching up with well academic achievement when they get back to school after the close of schools. And every of the children right activists and change maker was really worried to take a lead and take look after the children. But for me, I thought there was a need of taking a look for the children because everyone was really worried. And now everyone was really concerned about him or herself and neither of the people around them. But for me, it was really different. I saw the children as the group of people who are really left behind and need to take a look after. And I took my time in one of the orphanages and I went there, I had some time to teach the children in different subjects that they had. And also I had some time to teach them with computing and also to teach them about first aid and how they can help others. However, I also shared with them the preventive measures of COVID-19 that were shared by the World Health Organization. And this was really impactful because the people were using the local taps and they have to touch the taps and that is really one of the ways that can transmit the virus and i had to come up with a hand washing machine that people you could use the pedals instead of the hands and that was really safe and that helped a lot to ensure that everyone was safe from the virus wow that is that is 
Well, first of all, well done. I mean, I don't know, probably so many people have told you that, but just the fact that you have that motivation and that compassion for others, um, it's so inspiring and truly well done during this such a difficult time. You're so, you're so selfless to, to think about, you know, you know, other people. Okay, Ebony, I would love to hear about your volunteer work during the pandemic. So what inspired you to take action? Um, hi, I'm happy to see you. Um, happy to see the, you. Uh, great opportunity uh, to support people during pandemic is inspires me a lot uh, because, uh, as we know, the majority of people uh, had stress, panic during pandemic, and they needed support, hope for the future. So I wanted to support them and help them um, during this that time. Um, in addition, there were a lot of fake information on COVID-19 and its treatment on social media in Kazakhstan. So uh, I wanted uh, to uh, give people reliable information about COVID-19. So I uh, had decided to be a volunteer of UNICEF, of Project Fidesz for Quarantine. And, uh, I posted a lot of videos, photos, information on Instagram about COVID-19 and how to uh, uh, how to spend time productively during quarantine uh, and show them positive sides of quarantine through my own experience. Everybody's done such amazing work and you've each and individually targeted different problems. But overall, the message that you guys are sharing is, is positivity and love and light. And that's what we all need during such difficult times. So I am, we're so lucky to have amazing uh, young people like you. But COVID-19, the pandemic, has shown us that there are many issues with the way our world works. Um, so how would you reimagine the world in the future? What would you like to see change or done differently? Uh, Gitanjali, we can start with you. So um, I'm a very optimistic person. So I like to take this optimistic approach and then reimagine a world where we're exploiting new opportunities in remote learning. Because I feel like those are some of the biggest strides we've made is our education system. Like we're, education really shouldn't be limited to classroom teaching. It should really be a combination of video-based learning and digital resources so that people can get education all around the world. And I think that that's really what I want to see in the future. It's just a world where we're, we adapted to those changes before, but we continue them. We continue to go and keep doing these things because obviously we're making it work now so we can make it work in the future too. Hey, Ebenu, please tell me how would you reimagine a world? What would you like to see change or done differently? Uh, in my opinion, people became more positive uh, because uh, as, uh, and they started to appreciate their life. Also, um, people uh, learned how to find new solutions as they face challenges uh, at home, at work. Uh, for example, speaking from my own experience, I, I live in a, a village and at the beginning was hard for me, but then I learned uh, how to cope with it. Um, Emmanuel, tell me how, you know, how would you reimagine the world in the future? How, what do you see done differently, if you see anything changing? Oh, thanks very much, Millie. I'm just adding on where Gitanjali had said before, I still give an emphasis to online education. In most of the African countries, we're really behind in terms of online education. And uh, as of my own experience in Tanzania, I might say less than 10% of the education institution are providing online education. There is a need of improving the education system to ensure that most of the students can get access to online education because when schools were closed in Tanzania, most of the students had to stay home and they did not get access to education. It means a lot to me to kind of see every, by everyone, I mean the four people that are on this Zoom, we care so much about our education, we value it. And it makes me so happy, Emmanuel, that you are working so hard toward having um, people being introduced to online education um, 
from where you are from. It's extremely important. So I am just so pleased to hear that you care uh, so much about it, um, like, like, you know, we all do. So thank you all for sharing. Okay. I find it hard to imagine what life will be like after this pandemic, though, especially when the timeline is so unclear. It was very concerning to see that so many children had their educations disrupted because of the pandemic. One hope that I have is that children, wherever they live, have the technology to access education, even if school buildings are closed. It's also very important to me that everyone, young and old, continue to spread and kindness. It's been amazing to see young people lifting each other up online and supporting each other. I want to see that continue. And to the three of you, I am so incredibly impressed by you. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. I know that everyone watching will be really inspired by your stories. During this time and always, we should do whatever we can to lend a support to our own communities. No action is too big or too small. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>